Now time for member statements. The member from Halliburton, Cornwall Lakes, Brock. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. To raise awareness and trigger action to end all acts of violence against women and girls, the UN observes International Day for the Elimination of Violence Against Women on November 25th. In 1995, at the Fourth World Conference on Women, UN member states took up the global call to end all forms of violence against women and girls. They recognized that violence is one of the main mechanisms denying women equality and that it imposes high social, health and economic costs. Since then, an historic two-thirds of countries have put laws on the books to stop violence against women. Yet gaps in laws, implementation of legal protection, and essential services remain. The statistics are alarming. According to the YWCA Canada, there are 460,000 sexual assaults in Canada every year. Only 33 out of every 1,000 sexual assault cases are reported to the police, and 29 are recorded as a crime. These numbers speak volumes about how many assailants walk free and why women may be afraid to press charges up against their abusers. Ending violence against women should be one of our key priorities here in Ontario. Tomorrow, our Opposition Day motion will be debated, calling on the Ontario Legislature to establish a select committee to investigate sexual harassment in the workplace. Our culture is at a turning point. By acting now, supporting my reasonable request, we can continue this important dialogue, hear from victims and experts, bring forward a plan to address it, and build a safer and more equitable workplace environment for current and future generations. I'm hoping for unanimous consent tomorrow, Mr. Speaker. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you the member from Essex. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. I rise today uh, to uh, honour a local figure from my area, uh, Ron Colasanti, who passed away uh, Thursday, November the 7th at the Tidwell Hospital in Lakewood, Florida. Ron was 79 years old. He was a unique man who would help anybody in need, and he had a heart for politics and bettering his community. He was uh, the former Gosfield South uh, Councillor from 1967 to 1973, and was elected to Kingsville Council in 2010 at age 75. Uh, however, he did not run for re-election in October. Speaker, uh, Ron was a charismatic figure, uh, someone that I thoroughly enjoyed talking with. And uh, even though we were on completely opposite sides of the political spectrum, uh, perhaps that's what made our connection all the more uh, special. Uh, he was easy to talk to, he was plain spoken, and I think he was very well respected uh, within his career as a municipal politician and certainly within his community. He made incredible contributions to the local greenhouse uh, industry as well as his family. They are uh, literally world renowned. Uh, and he also added a, a, a virtue and a charisma to uh, deliberations at the municipal level that I think will be unmatched to you know, right to this day, Speaker, I simply want to offer my condolences to his family and to his colleagues and, uh, and to wish him Godspeed. He was really a remarkable figure, one that I certainly will miss and uh, one that, our, that contributed greatly to the community of Windsor and Essex County. Thank you very much, Speaker. Thank you. <laughs> member statements, the member from Halton. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I rise today to speak about a lovely event that I had the pleasure of taking part in this past weekend. Last Saturday night, I traveled to Campbellville's Gazebo Park to participate in their community tree lighting ceremony. I was there with the Honorary Mayor, Tony Cristello, and Liz Lambrick, along with a cheerful crowd of 40 kids, parents, grandkids, neighbors, and friends. They were all there. It was a wet, windy day, but try as it might, the weather didn't dampen anyone's spirit. And after enjoying some great music, hot chocolate, and the odd Timbit, the moment we were all waiting for arrived. After I led the crowd in a final countdown, Mayor Cristello flipped the switch and the giant tree sprang to life in brilliant color. There were oohs and ahs, clapping and even singing. And once the tree was lit, it was wonderful, a very special evening with friends and families under the stars. And while the lights, food, and music all made for a good time, it was really the people, Mr. Speaker, who had gathered together that made the evening special. I want you to know that it's evenings that, that, like this that bring people together, that really make a community feel one. I'm delighted that communities like Campbellville maintain such traditions, and I commend those who weathered the rain to help make the start of the holiday season so special. Thank you. 
Thank you. Member statements. The member from Huron, Bruce. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. On November 13th, the Huron Manufacturing Association handed out its awards for excellence at the Hensel and District Community Centre. Yeah. And this award ceremony is where businesses in my riding are recognized for their achievements in innovation and socially responsible business practices. Worthy of noting are the Blythe Farm Cheese, who received Manufacturer of the Year Award. And I might add that we've been very fortunate that this particular cheese has been served time and time again right here at Queen's Park, and it also was one of the top winners at the recent Royal Agricultural Winter Fair. Additional awards went to Brent and Brian Landsborough from Maelstrom, Maelstrom Winery and Joost van Dorp from Farm, the Blythe Farm Cheese, who received Junior Manufacturer of the Year awards. Ron and Ruth Schefter were recipients of the Chairman's Award, and Ice Culture of Hensel was the recipient of the Innovation Product Award. And that innovative product might come to mind when I talk about the World Junior Hockey Championships last year, and the Canadian Tire advertisement had an ice truck, a truck made solely out of ice. That was done in Hensel, Ontario. And lastly, Hensel District Co-op was the recipient of the Employer of the Year. I totally support this cooperative spirit, and they are indeed a great employer. These awards are important and a reminder of how rich our communities are with entrepreneurship and innovation. The Huron Manufacturing Awards ceremony is just one example that small business is big business in Huron Bruce. Thank you very much, Speaker. Member statements, the member from Windsor West. <laughs> Thank you, Speaker. I rise today to congratulate the Windsor International Film Festival on celebrating its 10th anniversary this month. Since its inception, the festival has brought cultural appreciation, tourism, and of course, entertainment to my community of Windsor West. This November demonstrated the growing success of the event, boasting over 100 titles shown at over 186 viewings throughout the nine day festival. With a record-breaking attendance of over 15,000 patrons, this event is proving to be foundational to the growth of the film industry in Windsor and the development of local talent across our creative sector. This festival and the ongoing films presented by the Windsor International Film Festival would not be possible without the professionalism and enthusiasm of all Windsor International Film Festival staff, board members, and the many dedicated volunteers. I would like to extend a special thanks to the festival's executive director, Vincent Georgie, managing director, Nick Cacciato, and technical director, Sung Mi Bae. As well, I would like to thank the festival's community partners and local businesses for providing the vibrant atmosphere that people have come to expect. With the credits just beginning to roll on the 2014 festival, there is already anticipation for the next in the series, and I encourage all members in this chamber to join me, my colleague Taras Natashak, and my colleague Percy Hatfield at the movies in 2015. Thank you. Thank you. Member Stavis, the member from Ottawa, Orleans. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. On Friday, November 14, I had the wonderful opportunity to attend the Ottawa Rape Crisis Center's 40th anniversary fundraiser at the Centerpoint Theatre. The Centre was celebrating 40 years of support, engagement and growth. It was a delightful evening with a silent auction component and a feature performance by the impressive comedian Jessica Holmes. The fundraiser succeeded in raising awareness in the community as well as over $9,500 in funds. The centre was founded in 1974 by a small group of women who were committed to offering services to a community in need. The main focus of the centre is to provide counselling to women, to raise awareness in the community and to educate and empower those seeking to end sexual violence. The ORCC has helped countless victims but also offers supports to families, friends and partners of women who have been sexually assaulted. The Centre ORCC is an actor important. This centre is very important to fight against sexual violence and the development of a safe community for all citizens. The staff and volunteers among the centre offer initiatives to help women who need advice and support. This line can be reached at 613-562-2333. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Merci. Thank you very much, Member Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, Speaker.
Canada's heavyweight boxing champion hails from Prince Edward Hastings. On Saturday, October 25th, Dylan Carmen, known in boxing circles as Big Country, became this country's biggest boxing champ. The former Maple Leaf Gardens, now known as Madame East Centre, was the setting for a brawl that made a Rocky Balboa, Apollo Creed fight look like a knitting bee, Mr. Speaker. <laughs> the 28-year-old from Maydock finished off Eric the Hammer Martel of Quebec City with what Toronto Sun writer Steve Buffery called a lethal left-right combination with just seconds to go to earn the knockout and the Canadian heavyweight championship. He's six foot six, 240 pounds. Ooh. From the former Belleville Boxing Club, he returns Saturday night to the Madoc Kiwanis Center to a hero's welcome. He's proud of where he comes from, and he gets the support of a lot of people back at home, sponsors included. We heard some mischievous tales on Saturday night from his mom and his grandmother, who were there as well, about his days walking the halls at Madoc Public and Center Hastings Secondary Schools. He played a lot of street hockey, played ice hockey at the Madoc Arena, and uh, spent some time fishing on Moira Lake. But ultimately, it was his love and commitment to boxing that helped him reach these amazing heights. So big country, you've got a big heart. The Commonwealth Championship is going to be next. He's a great role model and just proves that if you put your heart and soul into something, you can accomplish your dreams, Mr. Speaker. Big country, Carmen. Heavyweight championship of our big, beautiful country here in Canada. Congratulations. I think he also likes to knit. I'm not sure. <laughs> Member, State, member from Burlington. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I rise today in the House to acknowledge Women Abuse Prevention Month, and today is the UN International Day for the Elimination of Violence Against Women. Two weeks ago, I toured Halton Women's Place, the local women's shelter in my riding of Burlington. It was a timely visit as a young Burlington woman had just tragically lost her life to domestic violence. During my visit, I was deeply touched by the work Halton Women's Place is doing to restore the lives of women and children in our community. This is an organization providing shelter and crisis services for physically, emotionally, financially and sexually abused women and their dependent children. This is an organization fueled and inspired by the courageous women who want to make change in their lives. This is an organization dedicated to ending violence against women and children once and for all. To raise awareness about Women Abuse Prevention Month, Halton Women's Place has turned our community purple with a campaign called Shine the Light. Businesses and offices in New York City have decorated in purple, and individuals are wearing purple, wrapped in courage scarves like many of us are wearing here today, because purple is the colour of freedom. As part of the campaign, the Halton Women's Place has also received proclamations of zero tolerance for women abuse, including one from me during my visit, and raised the Halton Women's Place flag in every municipality in Halton Region. This flag symbolizes a call to action to end violence against women. This year, Halton Women's Place has provided services to 840 women and over 1,000 children through its residential and community outreach programs. In addition, it responded to more than 1,800 crisis calls. Through education and prevention, both in the shelters and in the community, Halton Women's Place has made and will continue to make a huge difference in the lives of some of, some of Halton's most vulnerable residents, and I am proud to stand in this place and salute them. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Member statements, the member from Durham. I rise in the House today to tell you about a very interesting meeting I had recently in my constituency office. Last Friday, I had the great pleasure of meeting 15-year-old Jessica and her mother. Jessica and her younger brother were adopted when Jenny Jessica was three years old. And while it's very clear the siblings, siblings have found their forever family, Jessica continues to advocate for others who are still looking for theirs. November is Adoption Awareness Month, which is what prompted Jessica and her, and her mom to make an appointment at my constituency office in Durham. Jessica and her mom, Carol, share, share their story with me. They told me about how they became a family and some of the challenges they faced. The daughter and mother also shared with me the advocacy, advocacy work that they have done to help others find their forever family. They talk about Jessica's first time presenting to, the, to a government body at the House of Commons when she was 11 years old. We talk a great deal about the importance of giving every child the very best start in life. The story Jessica told me was one where, where the start may not have been very, the very best, but in which a new beginning with a loving family has helped her to make up for it. So in honor of Jessica and her forever family, 
I remind you today that this is Adop Adoption Awareness Month. And I, will remind, I was reminded by Jessica of the importance of every child having a family to grow up and grow old in, to allow them to thrive to their fullest ability, as it is clear Jessica is doing now. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. It is, uh, thank all members for their statements.